Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids of the Week video. Thought I would mix one of these in while I'm continuing with your aliens and UFOs video. As always, this is just a random page that's within the cryptids.wikia.com website. And this one brought up yet another, in this case, Bigfoot-like cryptid, but with a twist. I thought it was just going to be just a simple Bigfoot tail, but in looking at the information associated with it, it could actually be a misinterpretation because it's apparently been linked to either being a long-lost gorilla if you could believe it, or also a werewolf, or even then something else just entirely different, maybe even up to being just a prank. And you know about that more here in a minute. So it has to do with this. You're looking at it now, you'll see exactly why I said originally it seemed to be like a Bigfoot type tail, but it's known as the Beeman Monster. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the interesting info associated with this creature, and then I'll give my own opinion as to what I think it truly is afterward. So what is this Beeman Monster? Well, it's a monster that's located specifically in Missouri, throughout several parts of Missouri to be exact. Uh, apparently it's known as the Beeman Monster because there's an area there in Missouri called Beeman, Missouri. So whatever this location is, it's like an unincorporated community. This is, I guess, the main area where this pl where this monster is found. But it's also found as well in Sedalia, Missouri. And then if you wanted to take things even further, it's apparently found in Kansas City, Missouri as well. And the way the story goes is this. And this is why it's almost like an urban legend there, especially when you hear about the origin, the quote-unquote origin of this monster. You have to go back to the early 1900s, and the legend goes that this Beeman monster actually came from a circus. So the way that happened is this. The circus was traveling by train, and somewhere along the way, it wrecked in that area. Who knows what caused that wreck? Uh, but either way, though, a lot of the animals got out from the circus, and one of them happened to be a 12-foot-tall gorilla. Remember I was mentioning earlier that it could be a misinterpretation in terms of it being a gorilla. So this gorilla basically escaped and it's uh, roamed out into the forest in that location and then its offspring eventually became this Beeman monster. So eventually I guess this gorilla mated with some of the animals nearby and then whatever weird mutation occurred between these two types of, of species basically cross-mingling with each other that in turn ended up creating this in terms of the Beeman monster. You'll see how that kind of like sounds like a tall tale, doesn't it? Because here you have a circus, there you have animals being lost. It's kind of like those stories that you hear about some mad scientist creating creatures in some laboratory and then the creatures escape and then that equals so-and-so monster within that area. That's what I was thinking at least when I was reading this information. This tale, by the way, comes from a gentleman. I don't know if he's still alive at the time, but uh, today at least, but at the time, his name was Russell Holman and he was someone that, that heard this information from his own grandfather. And that's just the way it went. Um, that's the origin of this Beeman monster. It's just been accepted almost as fact ever since then. But there is this at least. There are several sightings that people have over the next couple of decades regarding this creature. If there's one sighting, that's okay. But the fact that there's multiple sightings of this, then that's definitely something that, that, that comes about. In fact, the way the story goes is it seems like every couple of decades, there's always a new set of tales that come about, a new set of encounters, and it just keeps the the uh, the infamy t uh, the infamous uh, Beeman monster basically in that area as something that people talk about every now and then. In fact, one of the direct quotes from Russell Holman stated that it seems like they revive this story every 50 years or so. It's just a way of it basically taking on a life of its own. But here's some of the sightings, in fact, that occurred. There was a native at the time named Damon Smith, someone there from Sedalia, who stated that he saw this monster when he was very young, about 10 years old. He was riding in the back of his uncle's pickup, and then that's when he saw what he described as a wolf-life creature suddenly coming out from the sides of the woods and then basically running 
a parallel to the vehicle. Imagine that, that there he was in the back of the truck, and then he saw something this thing gaining on them and then matching him directly. What a time, especially to, uh, you never see that these days as far as kids being in the back of trucks. Um, you don't see that anymore, but that's the way it was back then. And then he saw this creature, didn't do anything necessarily to them. All it was was just basically uh, just following them, it seemed. But then it decided to just get out there afterward, like just get back into the woods, uh, I guess, after it inspected them. Uh, this guy, Damon Smith, stated that he heard of the legend, hadn't really paid too much attention to it. But once he saw it, it immediately came to mind. The interesting quote that he said was this, it wasn't quite animalistic. That was his direct quote. He said, it's hard to explain unless you've seen it. It made me think that this creature is far more, in lack of better terms, human-like than animal-like. Like, there's something about it where you could, if you looked at it, you could probably tell that it thinks, that it that it does, like, rational thoughts, that it looks into situations. It's not just acting on pure instinct. It makes it seem like it truly has some kind of logic factor to it. So I'm guessing that's what he's referring to. So that's one instance there. There's another instance, in fact, too. There was a guy by the name of Steve Mallard, also as a young boy, in this case, 12 years old. He stated at that time, he was there at his parents' barn there in the early morning, uh, sometime in the spring, and looking at some kind of worms. Like he was trying to dig these up throughout the backyard. But as he did so, he suddenly noticed that there was these footprints, huge footprints is how he described them. And he said that they looked like they led to some kind of very large imprint on the ground. He said almost like it was like a large deer or something else that had laid down on the actual ground itself. Afterward, the footprints got back up and then they led to some kind of pond area and then that was it. So like they stopped right then and there. Normally these would uh, be just footprints that would be just discarded if they were considered regular footprints, but they were again much larger than usual. And he stated that the space between them, like the stride, was also very far apart, far larger in fact than you would expect from any kind of regular animal. Not just that, but no doubt that it was human-like the way it walked like you can easily tell on footprints whenever something is walking on four legs or something is walking on two legs very rare for animals out there to walk on two legs so here you have something that was doing so with very large footprints and a very large stride and then that was it they didn't go any further like this guy steve he didn't uh uh, and a good choice for him, he didn't go any further and to try to examine where this creature went after the pond or if he could see the creature in person because as he stated, he got spooked. Um, he knew that whatever this thing was was going to be big and so he didn't want to necessarily kind of chance things afterward. But he had heard about the Beeman monster, the legend associated with it as well, and so that's what made him realize that this was it. And then um, um, he stated too that he'd heard that American Indians, Native American Indians around that area also had described seeing very similar creatures to this Beeman monster. That made me think though that if the tale of the Beeman monster was the early 1900s involving that circus crash, that circus train crash, uh, presumably then the Native Americans were there much earlier than that time period. So how could they have heard of this monster if the idea is that this monster only existed after the train crash? So that kind of like contradicted each other, but at the same time, who knows? We are talking about a monster, a Bigfoot-like monster or a wolf-like monster. So in the context of things, it just, it just doesn't really stand out. And then finally, there's this, another encounter that people have seen. There was animals or a set of animals that were found that were mauled to death, but no other usual signs of the animals that did the killing. So the, usually there's going to be like tracks, like if it's a wolf or it's some other type of predator, like creature, you would see them around, surrounding that animal, but no, not in this case. Uh, it's something that just apparently just came out of thin air almost, mauled the monster mauled the actual animal and then went back into the woods. I don't know if it ate part of the animal or if it just did the killing for fun outright. But either way, though, there's that story as well. And then finally, if you want to take things on another twist, there's this. There's the idea that a lot of the sightings that people have had there in uh, uh, the Missouri area in Sedalia was a prank. So the way it works is this. Apparently somebody confessed to it. There was a guy by the name of Jerry Lonningberg 
who stated that when he was in high school back in the 1950s, he and another set of friends stole a construction sign with these large round yellow flashing lights. So they stole it, they put some kind of brush around it, they put it near a field, near the Beeman area, and then that way it was almost like a, a prank in terms of trying to get people to think that this weird looking animal uh, like this weird looking device that now looks like an animal from far away with blinking lights as eyes could be misinterpreted as the beeman monster so that's at least one other angle but still that doesn't explain the tracks like the footprints i just mentioned or the animals that were mauled as well or the encounter the real one about the other one the guy that saw the 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 creature following the truck that doesn't explain those encounters could it explain other ones sure but at least with regards to that prank it doesn't cover the full tale and then as far as my own opinion uh, with this creature i'm thinking that the uh that the legend of it as far as the circus train that was just something that probably just someone came up with as a loose explanation kind of like a fantastic tale but really i think that this is a yet another type of bigfoot creature that just along the way has been misinterpreted as the beeman monster and that's why the the native americans probably have those tales from hundreds of years beforehand because they have truly seen this creature or its remnants or its kin afterward and then just through the passage of time people moving there that's where they see uh the 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 beeman monster as it is today and so the other tale about the circus thing maybe but not likely and still though this is just a bigfoot like creature that people have seen there to me that makes much more sense than anything else so but what do you guys think as far as this monster the beeman monster anybody from that missouri area anybody maybe grown up there or maybe had family members that grew up there if so if you know any specific spots that seem to have a uh, to be a hot spot for the beeman monster location then please post those comments below maybe if anybody has a chance uh, that has seen this creature in person and you want to tell your experience please do so as well too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care